In a few moments' time, you'll see someone attempting to come down over this very fast-running weir in a canoe. And that's just one of the new and different events that over 30 of Britain's most famous sportsmen will be trying to get right as we watch over the next three weeks the British Super Team Championship. scenery and the noise of Pulteney Weir in the background will tell you that once again we're on the River Avon at Bath for super teams and what super teams they are. The rugby team are back to defend their title they won last year. The athletes are here undefeated from two previous seasons. Then we have a team that we're calling Speed on Wheels which is everyone from BMX bikes to Formula One racing drivers and with the fighters who are fencers, karate players, boxers and judo players. They're the four teams. The first two teams we see in action are the team from rugby who have 240 caps between them and the people that have to take them on are the team we're calling Speed on Wheels. Let's meet those teams now. Scotland's captain and fullback, Andy Irving. England and Mosley flanker, Nick Jevons. Pontypool and Wales prop forward, Graham Price. The former Cambridge University in England fullback, Marcus Rose. England and Lancashire centre, John Carlton. Current Welsh rugby coach, John Bevan. Hoyk and Scotland centre, Jim Rennick. Wales and Pontypool flanker, Jeff Squire. And the team coach is England and Sales scrum half, Steve Smith. Now the Speed on Wheels team. Motor racing driver, Derek Bell. A world champion from Speedway, Peter Collins. Motorcycle road racing champion, Roger Marshall. A British champion from Speedway, Dave Jessup. European and British champion at karting, Martin Hines. A giant from the world of cycling, Super Sid Barris. And another great cyclist, Mick Bennett. The king of BMX bikes, Andy Ruffle. And perhaps the greatest name in post-war British motorsport. Hello, I'm Sterling Moss. And the now familiar setting for the Townsend Tarrison Championship, Bath and the River Avon and Pulteney Weir. And Pulteney Weir is just one of the problems for the competitors in the first event, that's the canoeing. Two single slalom races and then a Canadian Fours. And the single slaloms are different because they've got to come down that weir. The first man to try it will be John Carlton of Rugby Union. Against the clock, six slalom gates to negotiate and he's looking a little apprehensive. Stand by. So John Carlton in blue for Rugby Union going away. The England and Oral Wing Three Quarter, the British line from Lancashire. Now, all the rest of the teams watching because he comes through the first slalom glade, or at least attempts to. That's just about a metre wide. He mustn't touch the poles. If he does, he'll get penalties. And he looks to be OK through that so far. That's the first of the six he's got to try and negotiate. All against the clock, remember. Now, on this next gate, he has to go through backwards, as if it wasn't difficult enough the other way. And the water, very quick running. Has to watch the paddles. The difficulty is going through backwards. You can't see where the paddle is. And he seems to be OK. He's through first and second. This is what lies ahead. And John Carlton will be breathing a little now. He's got one gate before the weir, and then he shoots the rapid. Going through now. He's touched it. That'll be a penalty. He has a blue flag. Five seconds to add over the weir, into gate four, and he's missed that altogether. And that'll be 20 seconds. 20 seconds, so 25 in all, because John Carlton's missed a gate. 25 seconds in all he's now got. 25 seconds to add to that running time as John Carlton for Rugby Union, the first of the canoeists in the super teams, comes to gate five. This one he has to come past and come back upstream. This super team champion is no longer any joke, even if it ever was. Swings across to gate six, the last one on the course. And the water thundering over the weir. And he's touched that as well. That's another five. That's 30 seconds. 
on our clock to uh, add to the running time. 30 to add to his running time, a long run now, down to the finish line. The first of the single canoe races. And Dave Jessup, in fact, will be the man going against John Carlton's time. Go on, John. Waiting for the gun. Completely bemused by all that, I'm sure. There's the gun. Touchdown in 2.16.09 with a total of 30 to add. So 2.46.09 for Dave Jessup, one of our Speedway internationals to try and beat world pairs champion and British champion in 1980. Already has five seconds of penalties from gate two. Coming to a difficult gate four down over the rapids. And he's going outside like Carlton. Outside, misses the gate altogether, and that should be 20 seconds. He has two flags, 20 seconds on that one, so 25 seconds of penalties for Dave Jessup already. And really taking his time. Confirmation, 25 seconds against Dave Jessup. And in fact, all going wrong on that difficult gate four. Jessup, slower than Carlton, has lost heat one for the speed on wheels. So the second of the two single slalom races, and here's an experienced superstar and super team campaigner, Marcus Rose, the England and Coventry fullback. His opponent, by the way, in the speed on wheels is Roger Marshall, the great road uh, racing motorcyclist. The reverse gate, now back through two. A little bit wobbly. One watching the judge, nothing from him. He's all right, he hasn't touched the pole. He's through the first two. Now the great three just above the weir. Through three, over the weir, fast now, gate four is the problem, nobody's got through it yet. And Rose is well through, it just touches. He gets one flag, a blue flag, five seconds. So just five seconds, that's the best effort so far. So Marcus Rose, a good time, five seconds to add to that running time on the left. First competitor in the second slalom race, coming down now across the pool, where he'll go past gate five, turn round and take it upstream. Looking pretty serious for once, too. Getting himself straight. Just about a metre width in those gates. Watch the paddles. He's through that one. This is good. No, a flag has gone up. Now, that's a bit of severe judging. A flag has gone up there, so another five seconds to add. Oh, Marcus will probably complain about that. Down through six. He's clear. So just ten seconds to add. And he's not far from the line now. A little bit of speed on. The line coming up there. And 2.03.47. Add 10. 2.13.47. A good time for Marcus Rose. And a good target for Roger Marshall to try and hit. And Marcus Rose over the weir was pretty impressive. Comes through gate three. Takes the weir steps very well indeed. Just trying to get straight there. Just a little bit of a wobble. Saw the, the moment. Corrected very nicely. Just that touch, which was five seconds, but the first man to go through the bottom weir gate. And the speed on wheels man, Roger Marshall. Gate three. Secret here, get it absolutely straight. And then go. No, he's touched. That's five seconds to add. He's a bit crooked over the weir, he's going to miss four. No, he's all right. Or is he? No. No, what would he give him for that? No, he's given him a miss gate. He's given him a miss gate. That's another 20 to add. So Roger Marshall in trouble here with penalties. Yeah. 25 seconds to add already as he comes to five. Remember, Marcus Rose only had 10 seconds in all in that time of 2.13.47. So there's 25 to go on to that time already. As Marshall realizes it, Frantic bit of paddling over to gate six. And I don't think he's going to do this. 25 to add. 25 is his total to add to that. So there's no way he's going to be able to do this now because he's still a long way from the finish. So total points then in this part of the canoeing with one more race to come that's the canadian fours rugby union four speed on wheels two the rugby team winning both of the single slalom races they were good ones too
And here's the speed on wheels four that the rugby men are up against. Derek Bell, the great Le Mans driver, up at the front. Then Martin Hines, the karting champion. And the young Andy Ruffle, the youngest man here, just 17 years old. He's that freestyle cycling champion. And then Mick Bennett, another cyclist, the Commonwealth Games bronze medalist in the 4,000 metre team pursuit. Much lighter than the rugby men. Let's see if they can keep it straight. Nick Jevons looking like a giant there at number two. Jim Rennick up at the front. Then Nick Jevons. That was a late change. They wanted to put Jevons in front, but decided to give Jim Rennick the, uh, the spearhead. Then they got Graham Price and John Bevan. Both Jevons and Price in the boat last year when they were beaten by the fighters in the final of the super teams. Both teams forward. Big Canadian fours. They come right up to our commentary position here through a slalom gate. Turn completely back through a side and then 30 meters to the finish, and here they go. Rugby Union on the right in blue should have the expertise. Certainly got the strength and speed on wheels with Derek Bell out in front. This is different than Le Mans. There they go, and they've been having trouble keeping straight, but not doing too badly at the moment. Good Canadian force to start off, and the speed on wheels going across River Sewer so Rugby Union, and there could be a little thump here. And they're well up as they're coming up now, just a few meters to the slalom gate. One, two, listen to it. One, two, go, go. Through the gate they go. And speed on wheels are through. Now they've got to do a complete turn. Rugby Union coming to their gate. No penalties for touching the poles in the Canadian fours. They've just got to get through. That's difficult enough. Speed on wheels trying a very tight turn. And Rugby Union have gone just a little wider. Now, speed on wheels are straight. Once they go through this, they've got about 30 metres to the finish. That's OK, that's through. And they're about three boat lengths up now on the Rugby Union team who can't get straight. Speed on wheels going down to the finish. They're going to take this if they keep in the boat. And Rugby trying to go through sideways. They've just about got through. They're heading for the weir. And Speed on wheels looking over the shoulders. They know they've got this. They're there. Tremendous cheer. Speed on wheels win the Canadian Fours. And Rugby Union, beaten by the fighters in last year's super team final in the Fours, have lost out here again in this first semi final of the new super team championship. So the points from the three canoe races, 5-4 after the first of the eight events. Good race. So with the points very close at the end of the first event, we come to the second event, which is the cycling, which takes on an entirely new format. We're on the same road that we've used in Bath before, but this time we have three men in the team. The first man goes, the length of this road, 290 metres, and then hands the bike over to the second competitor. They have to exchange at that end. He cycles back and hands it over to the third competitor, and it's a match race, two teams drawn together, first team over the line are the winners. Well, before they race, let's take a look at Andy Ruffle on his BMX bike. Things have happened very quickly for this young man. These BMX bikes came to us from the United States only a couple of years ago. Everyone took up the craze, but one man, this man, was determined to excel. He wanted to be the best, and nothing pleases him more now than to prove it whenever possible. Apart from junior superstars, he's our youngest ever competitor. And that BMX bike is just about a part of it. He's a very fit and determined young champion. And although still only 17, he's the British BMX racing champion, the British freestyle champion, and he loves the stunts. What a following he's got. Already a television personality in his own right. And they can save the prayers. They're in very good hands. Andy Ruffles. So two men having their first event in this super team semi-final for rugby in blue, Andy Irvin, the great Scottish fullback, and in green for the speed on wheels, Peter Collins, the great speedway champion. And waiting to take over the number two men, Marcus Rose for rugby, and Andy Ruffle for the speed on wheels. On your marks. And away they go. The first leg of this 290 metre course, as Ron Pickering was saying, a very different cycle race in this year's super teams. They have to change over at the top end. 
three men per team and it's Peter Collins going out in front coming up over the hill you can see how steep that hill is because you lose sight of them completely as you look from this changeover point nothing much between them and Andy Irvin has picked up well Peter Collins roared ahead but Andy Irvin picked up and Andy Irvin now changes to Marcus Rose and Peter Collins changes to Andy Ruffle Andy Ruffle is off Andy Ruffle trying to get pedaling before he was really on the bike and Ruffle collapsed but he's back on the saddle in the saddle again my goodness incident on this second leg of the cycling and that's given Marcus Rose a very good cyclist indeed an excellent chance of setting up a big lead for rugby union Come Marcus on, Rose opening up a big gap now as he hands over to Nick Jevons Andy Ruffle has done very well indeed after incident at the uh, change of a point and look at that he's ridden very well indeed and Roger Marshall taking over for him so it's Nick Jevons for rugby against Roger Marshall Roger Marshall the road racing motorcyclist with a lot of work to do now if he's to catch this big man Nick Jevons Jevons the big legs powering him down through looks over his shoulder I think he can take it pretty comfortably and it's going to be four points for rugby union from the cycling and one point for the speed on wheels Jevons with a big smile on his face Roger Marshall shakes his head said I couldn't catch you without an engine and really it all was lost for the speed on wheels team when Andy Ruffle took over from Peter Collins on the second leg. Peter that was a bit of a disappointment really wasn't it? It was really we were neck and neck up until we the changeover the first changeover and uh, Andy jumped on one side of the bike and straight off the other so <laughs> I saw you standing there, you couldn't believe your eyes, I don't think. No, I couldn't, no, not after seeing him do all his trick cycling last night. So at the finish of the cycling, the score stands, Rugby Union, nine points, speed on wheels, five points. And we now come to the cross-country run, in which every member of the team takes part. The eight blues there representing rugby, the eight greens representing the speed on wheels. The course, 1,600 metres, a fraction over a mile. I think the rugby players will pace themselves nicely. They produced the winner last year in Phil Bennett. And uh, those that have had a bit of experience, Nick uh, Jevons, he finished fourth. Marcus Rose was third. Jeff Squire was fifth. And that was good for a big man. And Graham Price was seventh. So they know all about packing. That's what uh, wins cross-country running. Roger Marshall leading them out. David Jessup giving him uh, support. And Andy Ruffle hanging in there nice, at 17 years of age, the youngest competitor. Big Jeff Squire looking fairly menacing at his size. Andy Irvin following up. Sid Barris is in there. John Carlton gone through. Remember, they'll add up all their places and the lowest score will win. Jim Rennick from Scotland and Hoyk running along the towpath there, running wide, but running well. So they've got Jeff Squire, Andy Irvin, then Jim Rennick, Roger Marshall, Andy Ruffle still leading that uh, green charge with Sid Barris. Super Sid on the right, three greens doing exceptionally well. Roger Marshall, Andy Ruffle, Peter Collins coming into it and going well. Mick Bennett also up there. Nick Jevons did uh, pretty well last year. Graham Price coming into it. Now the Speedway riders, Peter Collins uh, is up there and David Jessup, the two uh, shorter men. Now, the race is on. And still three greens up in front. And the rugby players will have to do something about this. Their reputation somewhat at stake, as at least they have to get around on their own two feet and not around on wheels. Speed on wheels, leading them. Three and three, four greens up. Peter Collins and John Bevan going through with motor racing driver Derek Bell. And suddenly we've got uh, Jim Rennick putting in a little burst, taking uh, Andy Irving with him. And it's Mick Bennett that's gone with him from cycling. And then Andy Ruffle. And then Sid Barris and Roger Marshall. But the rugby players, Jeff Squire is bringing Marcus Rose, then Nick Jevons, John Carton, Graham Price. And then we've got David Jessup following up. Peter Collins looking uh, pretty tired, as is John Bevan. John Bevan and it's Derek Bell at the back. Motor Racing's uh, 
Evergreen. And he's not really at the back. Because uh, way, way back, we've got Martin Hines, the man from karting. And he really is struggling a bit. And that's going to make a little bit of a difference. Two greens at the back. And they're coming into the finish now. Andy Irving gets through. Jim Rennick gets second. Mick Bennett gets third. And they're very tired on the line. Young Andy Ruffle with Sid Barris have brought two greens into the next two places. Then Marcus Rose and Jeff Squire. And that's the way they'll finish. Way at, way at the back there, Martin Hines from Cutting. He's uh, struggled a bit all the way around this course. Just hoping that his other competitors in green have done slightly better than him. Derek Bell from Motor Racing, three times the winner of Le Mans, of course. Knows all about stamina and endurance and wheelpower. Partners Jackie Ix, but uh, knew he'd find this hard. Derek, uh, you started off well, but uh, it's a bit longer even than the 24-hour Le Mans, isn't it? Well, I, I'm not making excuses, but I, one always does, of course. The car wasn't any good. No, no, I know. It's, it's running. No, in fact, I, I'm used to running three to four miles, and I, I, I got a certain pace for that, and that's the pace I was sort of trying to run, and I can't go any faster. I suddenly realised this afternoon. Is this a standard training? I mean, people wonder if motor racing divers do train. They say you sit in the cockpit, and that's all you've got to do. Superstars has proved that wrong in the past. How much training do you do, actually, on the road? Well, they have to do a lot. I run three to four miles three to four times a week. It's the only way, really, to keep in shape. I mean, you can't, and lots of press ups and that sort of exercise. It's the only thing because your shoulders need developing, and of course, you've got to be physically fit because we're up to 150 degrees in the cockpit sometimes. And of course, we're wearing all these ridiculous clothes, and it's very physical to drive. So, we've got to looking forward it. to the press ups, aren't I? Can't wait. <laughs> and the totting up's been down. The score 50 to rugby, 76 to speed on wheels. Rugby win the cross country. Their score moves on to 13, speed on wheels to six. The crowd always good at Bath, gathering now to see the start of the new obstacle course. Remember, four points for a win, one to the loser, but no points if your team should be disqualified. So Andy Irvin and Andy Ruffle to set off on this obstacle course relay, the one we saw, the familiar new course in the past Masters competitions, exactly the same. This, of course, being a relay, four men per team. On your marks. On, Andy. Andy Irvin with experience from superstars as opposed to super on, teams. Andy. Watch this young man, Andy Ruffle, who's very quick indeed, recovered from falling off the bike, which is the last thing you want to do being a bike trick rider. He's going very well here. On to the long jump. And any flags so far? I couldn't see one. On to the tyres, that's the new part, dancing in and out. And he's in a bit of trouble there, and Andy Irvin's in awful trouble on the parallel bars. Oh, and onto the beam, just four inches wide. Puffs. Oh, that's nasty. Irvin's picking up for rugby. The dreaded event for rugby union. They've never done well in this. And the speed on wheels going well over the high jump. The hurdles, the last three, doesn't matter if you knock them down. And now the long run back, and this really does take them. Irvin's picked up a lot. John Carlton will take over for rugby union, and then it'll be Roger Marshall for the speed on wheels. Away goes Roger Marshall for the speed on wheels. John Carlton away for Rugby Union and absolutely neck and neck at the top of the wall. Over the 12 foot wall. Got a rope round it, Roger. And Roger Marshall's got trouble with the rope on the wall. He's just managed to clear it. Who's next? Rugby, surprisingly, up at the moment. And Marshall's in trouble on the parallel bars. John Carlton through the tyres. The tire. Speed on wheels, desperately wanted to win this. They're 13-6 down overall. And it really would be a surprise if Rugby managed to pull it off. Carlton on the beam. Taking it easily. Over the high jump. Well up. Marshall trying to bounce. Good and Rugby ahead at the end of the second leg as John Carlton takes the run back. And he'll take over, pass over to Jim Rennick. And he's certainly got a bit of speed. Meanwhile, it's Roger Marshall. All the way, come Away on. goes Jim Rennick for Rugby Union. This really is a surprise. Parallel bars. Strong event, good arms. Long jump could be a problem. <coughs> Derek.
Derek Bell seeing Jim Rennick on the beam and almost seeing him fall off, but he's still there. Stop, stop, back to this one, back to this one. Owen Bell in trouble on the tyres, and there's penalties as well for Derek Bell. The judge had to watch this, the penalty flags are moving. Jim Rennick turns, and the last man for rugby will be Marcus Rose. But there's a long gap now as Rennick comes up, hands over to Marcus Rose. Derek. Come on, all the way. Who Dig competed in, in this last year and has a great fear of the long jump. The long jump he dreads and runs straight through it. Decides not to take it at all. He's never cleared that, so there's another five there for Rugby Union. Sid Barris with a lot to do, and they've got more penalties than rugby. Rose gets over that, and it looks like well, Rugby Union well. going to a surprise win here in the obstacle course relay event well, four. As Rose canters down the line, he doesn't have to run back. Well, a surprise win maybe, but Marcus Rose there risking the wrath of the judges by running through that long jump. Smiling Sid Barris, though, goes over. The vanquished meets the victor. The sporting handshake representing the spirit of the occasion. But my word, these rugby players well pleased with themselves, as they should be, as their score mounts 17 points to 7. Rugby Union leads speed on wheels. Well, as you can see, and probably here, we've got a, quite a change in the weather on the morning of the second day in the first semi-final of the new Super Team Championship. It's wet, it's cold, and it's windy. And sheltering here under the trees on this lovely drive leading up to Bath's historic Royal School is just about the best spot to be. The superstars, I can tell you, aren't very happy about the weather because their first event this morning is swimming, and that's outdoors. After that, they'll move to an indoor site for the gym tests, then it's the team basketball, and where rugby have come unstuck on that in the past, and then finally, it's a tug of war. So there are 24 points still left to be decided here in this semi-final, but rugby, as we know, have built up a very useful lead on that first day. So the first event this morning, then, and for that, we go to the poolside. This is a 25-yard pool. What a pity it's not bathed in sunshine, but our teams are out ready for one length of crawl, followed by two individual lengths of breaststroke, and then one final swim of two lengths crawl. Peter Collins from the sport of Speedway. Two Speedway men, Thank you, Ian Ma. David Jessup swimming. Competent dive off, and Peter Collins thrashing away, but look at Marcus Rose, a superb swimmer. And in a way, it's a good job, it's only a 25-yard pool, as big Jeff Squire gets away, how sadly he was missed in New Zealand on that British Lions tour once he was in here. Now, he's being chased by Derek Bell, and this is one length of breaststroke. And already there is a very large gap, seven or eight uh, yards, as Jim Rennick prepares to go in for rugby on the far side. And Derek Bell hands over to Sid Barris. Super Sid from Keighley has got that to chase. Jim Rennick. Oh, swimming well. And remember, they've got the best swimmer of all, Nick Jevons, on last leg, who really... Uh, has a massive lead, and it could be almost a lead. Poor David Jessup from Speedway has to follow that. Tumble turn from Jevons, and the rugby boys are away. This great flanker, six feet four of him, looks as home in the water as he does on the rugby field, comes up, and they are clear. It's a loud applause. It's a tremendous win by them. It takes their score up to 21 points to eight to the speed on wheels. And they've still got about seven metres to swim, David Jessup. He swung well, in fact. Another good speedway man, look at that. Swung well. Indeed, all the team from the speed on wheels swung well, but they were against a super team from Rugby Union. Well, that rather easy, if somewhat predictable win in the swimming, takes the rugby team on to 21 points to eight over speed on wheels. Now for a change of environment, we move indoors for the gymnasium tests. And this is where volunteers were hard to come by. These are pressed men, four from each team, and each man has a go at one of the gym tests. The first is the squat thrusts, followed by the press-ups, then sit-ups, and then jumps over a bar. 
and the scores are added together, each four men doing their best for one minute, and it's the highest cumulative score which wins for the team. For rugby, Marcus Rose. Marcus Rose to do the squat thrusts for one minute. Speed on wheels, Roger Marshall. So Formula One racing driver takes on England and Cambridge fullback. Five, four, three, two, one. So rugby score on the left, speed on wheels on the right. And the clock ticking away because this is squat thrusts for one minute. The countdown is on. Marcus Rose pacing himself nicely, keeping a good rhythm going. But falling behind on the score, Roger Marshall is doing the better at the moment. He's four or five up, and he's doing well. Roger Marshall being cheered on. Tiring a little bit, but look at this for scores. Speed on wheels have kept it up, and Marcus Rose will not close that gap, and that's a good score. Well done, speed on wheels. 64 to 57, unless the referee changes that score, and what a good effort. Two forts for Marcus Rose, 55 his total, nine forts for Roger Marshall, but his total, 56. Jim Rennick, tough doer, Scott, brilliant centre. And he's powered up the score, and he's giving rugby a good lead as Derek's arms show all the effects of fatigue. 20 seconds left and he's not going to need it, I'm sure about that. Jim Rennick's also slowed down, but 52 is a massive score. They must have known. Look at this, he's piling it up. Oh, and the agony, evident. Oh, the heart willing. The body weak. Good scores, though. 43 and 58. Total 113 to 99. Rugby got into the lead. <laughs> what were you saying, Jim? 30 seconds ago. Rural tube leaf felt when you rode the Atlantic, can you? <laughs> You're holding your arms a bit there. Yeah, they're going, they're away. <laughs> seen, seen stars a wee bit, but I just. <laughs> That's coming now. <laughs> and big Jeff Squire for rugby taking on Dave Jessup from Speedway. More than half a minute left, and they're keeping keeping together. He's tough as this fella, David Jessup. Like Peter Collins, short, stocky, but tough. Twenty seconds to go. Getting pushed along. Rugby staying in the lead and just slightly adding to that lead. Ten, nine, Nick Jevons eight, delighted to be out seven, of all this. Six, five, four, Jeff Squire's done well. Look at this for a score. One. 57 to 52. Both very respectable scores. He must revel in this atmosphere, normally outdoors in a packed stadium, but here he's got a lot of friends. I was put into the last minute, really, and uh, that wouldn't have been the one I'd have chosen, but that was the one I had to do. And I Which did. one would you have liked? The press-ups I would have okay. rather have done, but, uh, you know, that, we ended up with that one, that's fine. Well, you've left Andy Ruffle and in fact, the lesser does with a big target in the bar jumps, Andy. Now, what about bar jumps? Well, um, I like it, it's, it's good, and uh, I'm going to try my best, and hopefully we can pull up a few points and uh, get a bit closer to the rugby team. Four, three, two, one. Now, a bit of economy of effort going on here. Just got to slip over that bar. Minimum effort to keep you going. And he's going well. And John Carlton. But look at the big bite that John Carlton's had. That's a big jump. Now he's lost his rhythm. Lost his rhythm altogether. And the score's piling up. Look at this. 35 to 20, 28, 29. They're nearly 10 ahead. They've got to make up nearly 20, though. That would be a, a big, big score. But Andy Ruffle going well. 213 to 207. This is closing the gap. And John Carton's in trouble, and rugby are in trouble. In very serious trouble with 20 seconds to go. 
they're up there, 226, and they've gone past. That's a brilliant effort by Andy Raffle. That really is superb. Magnificent rhythm he's keeping going, and John Carlton's dead, and he can't keep it up. And look at this, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and speed on wheels have done it through the 17-year-old. Massive score. 253, 102 jumps over the road to 69, and what a reception he's getting. And John Carlton shakes his head and says that was a tremendous effort. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, he really pulled it out of the bag. I mean, to do that many jumps anyway is fantastic. I mean, he's really saved the team and uh, we won it. You well, know, fantastic. Must have been a marvelous bit of team selection. I mean, you lulled them into a full sense of well, security. No, but he said he liked that and he'd try it. The others didn't particularly want to, and he's yeah. light. He can lift that body around him. We've seen him move on his bike and everything else. We thought that he had to be the right guy. A bit yeah, we coached him a bit. <laughs> yeah. no, it's the whole team. The whole team has worked together and psyched each other out, and uh, it's worked really well. And the rugby players have got to take a bite back. They were 21 points to 8. It's now 22 points to 12. And a big crowd here looking forward to this one. The team basketball, invariably a hotbed of competition. And already driver Derek Bell looking as if he means business. Jeff Squire early in this first half with a chance. John Bevan trying. Jeff Squire trying. There's the first basket. 2-0, Jeff Squire, rugby league. Behind the line, behind the line. Long ball from Nick Jevons, right up to Jeff Squire, got a clean basket, two more. 4-0. Speed on wheels need to settle down a bit, it's all a little frantic. And Rugby waiting for the chances, waiting for a good interception, holding the ball there, waiting for the men to get into position, trying to find Squire all the time. Blue ball, side line. Please. Blue ball. Go on, Jeff. Carlton, so speed on wheels with two new men on. Dave Jessup in possession straight away, and it's Irvin and... Jeff Squire robbing all the time up front. Another chance for Irvin on the rebound. There's the third one. 6-0. basket for Jeff Squire. And another substitution. Rugby Union are substituting. And my goodness, they're bringing all three on. Jim Rennick, number five. Marcus Rose, number nine. And Graham Price, number eight. Going off is Andy Irvin, number 11. Number four, John Carlton. And number seven, Nick Jevons. <laughs> John Bevan to Squire, unmarked completely. And Speed on wheels, lucky to get away with it. And it's John Bevan against the rebound. No nine, score. Shooting three. And that's a foul on number nine, Andy Ruffle. John Bevan. Good shot. Two chances to make two. That's one point scored. Three throws to make two points. That's one point score to make it 9 0. No, stop, stop, stop. Got one more chance. Now the ball's in play after this. Yes. Two good baskets, two one point baskets by John Bevan. So 10 0. Rugby lead the speed on wheels. Bevan moving very quickly up the Jeff Squire, the two Hushman and Rob there. Roger Marshall has. They must hold, they must let their men get into more position. Martin Hines robbed by a little John Bevan. Finds Jeff Squire, completely unmarked yet again. There it goes. 12 0. Well jumped by John Bevan. Not a big man. Finds Jeff Squire, is a big man. Jim Rennick trying to find Marcus Rose and robbed there by the number 10, Dave Jessup. Andy Ruffle, number 9. Tries to find Jessup again, robbed by Marcus Rose. A long ball up to Jeff Squire, stands there. Good morning, thank you very much. Number nine. And Andy.
Andy Ruffell fouling again. Stand still. Two shots. Right. Put your feet on the line. Missed the first. Two more chances. Stand still. Two Two shots. shots. One score. That was a Fifteen nil. John Bowen gets another chance. The and misses that one. Play now continues. Rose to Squire. I should say, in fact, to Squire. Yes, and he scores again. Speed on wheels. In fact, not quite sure what was going on. Seventeen nil the score. But by half time, it was twenty-five nil. Eighteen of those points scored by Jeff Squire. Speed on wheels, looking for advice from the boss, Sterling Moss, with Derek Bell anxious to try and find a way around the problem. Well, then you better sit up here. No, I'll keep it moving. Uh, it's still going. We'll sit down. When you need, you need to sit down, let me go and I'll keep it. Rugby full of confidence and also full of ideas. <laughs> and down. Um, do your own thing, Dan. I think Bumps pass a bit more, boys, rather than the head, boys, yeah. especially unless we pass into Jeff or Nick. Because, uh, you know, that with them, it's easy to bounce past over It's easy to control this down there, and it's spread it wide. But late in the second half, speed on wheels showed signs of finding a chink in the rugby armour. But they were 45-2 down. <laughs> well, a good conversion against the rugby union team, but you don't score points for that in basketball. Steve Smith is enjoying being the manager. Time running out now. Bell! Go on! Oh. Yes! <laughs> oh, boys. You win, well, you well done. There was some, some frustration on your part. A certain amount, yes. I've never seen a goal like that before, you see. <laughs> I think they were wonderful just to stand back and let me keep practicing. I was waiting for the bash in the back of the neck because I've heard about these rugby players. You nearly got subbed off for, uh, for, for fouls, personal fouls. Did you realize that? I didn't know, but I was getting. You have to, they're big blokes. You have to have a go at them. And I used to play rugby, so I thought, well, if I can't go play basketball, I'll play rugby instead. And that massive victory on the basketball court makes this the overall score. Rugby Union 26, Speed on Wheels 13, one event to go. Speed on Wheels, of course, can't win, but important to keep going because the third and fourth place in the super teams decided on the most points scored by the losing semi-finalists. All ready for the tug of war then, with Rugby on the left and the Speed on Wheels team on the right. Very much up against it. 60 kilograms lighter than the rugby team who've had to drop Andy Irvin from their team. It's seven men against eight. Are you ready, Speed on Wheels? Yes. Are you ready, rugby footballers? Yes. Pick up the rope, take the strain. Give rugby football. Steady. Pull. Four metre pull. That white line. And rugby moving it back efficiently. Nick Jevons on the front, Jeff Squire. And it's going to be tough. Derek Bell right at the back there. Front man Mick Bennett holding on, but he can see that uh, white notch going over the centre line. And the first pull well to rugby, the smile well on the done. face of Marcus Rose well and Steve Smith, their coach. Sterling Moss pulling there, coming in for the injured Martin Hines. The coach is in the team. Reserve not available, so the manager of the team stepped in. But two points to rugby. <laughs> One to speed on wheels. I want a yard, let it come. Rugby, let it come this way. Come on. Keep the rope over there. Speed on wheels now on the left, rugby on the right. The referee, international referee Peter Baker, just checking and making those seven rugby players give a bit until that red market wheels. is over that I'm white ready line. Rugby footballers. Pick up the rope, take the strain, give, give it, let it come. They don't really want to Steady. give. Pull! Ah, Sterling Moss in the middle of his team there. Mick Bennett, number one, an important man, but the rugby players walking back with it. It's a four metre pull and they're doing it with ease. Look at it, it's about a foot to go, whistle goes. Two to one to rugby. The score moves on to Rugby Union, four points, speed on wheels, two. One, one more pull, gentlemen. One more pull. <coughs> or, or placed 
to walk then. Right, we must do that. That's, that's what we do. It's the old thing, off, right? Yeah. So what are you on the road, please, gentlemen? Okay. 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 Rugby football now on our left for this third pool. Speed on wheels on our right. And we should remind you that these fellas are giving away a tremendous amount of weight. 60 kilograms they're giving away to the seven rugby players who've dropped Andy Irvin. He's the lightest man, and he says the fittest man, therefore he had to be dropped. I and what an effort they're putting wheels. up. I wear the rugby football. We got the rope, take the strain. Derek Bell give, into everything in this uh, team give a little bit competition. More. Steady. Pull! And they're going to lock off. The rugby players are going to lock off. And suddenly they jerked, and all they did was jerk themselves off. <laughs> off their feet. And <laughs> Sterling Moss's ruse has worked. Let the rope go. <laughs> the sad news at the end of that is that the Speed on Wheels team are disqualified for dropping the rope. So they lose their point that they might have got. Deliberately letting go of the rope is a disqualification. Oh, oh, well, Sterling, you're all together at the end. You're still here. One injury or two, but what did you feel about all that? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, we had a bit of a pull, let's face it. It was a little bit tough, and uh, we felt that perhaps the best thing to do was to let them win one of them anyway, <laughs> which we did, you know. And Andy, year. you remember the bit on the bike, I think? Oh, yeah, I do. I mean, how can I forget? I mean, you know. But uh, overall, the series has been absolutely fantastic. You know, it's been a great experience for me. And uh, next time I come, if I'm asked back again, I'll eat 500 hamburgers before we do this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well done, but it's nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Steve, you got a smile on your face rather than the pain you had on it last year when you took part. <laughs> it looked like hard work, that one, David. It went well, didn't it? Yeah, they got the rhythm going. We uh, give it the old one-two, looked over the ceiling and uh, pulled those massive wheelers over straight, no problem at all. The whole contest? Enjoyed it, they're a good bunch of lads and they gave it all they had. Obviously, they were disadvantaged sometimes because uh, their sport doesn't put into sort of land and sea events, but they're a great bunch of lads, they gave it all they got. And so, one trophy in this Super Team Championship, already won by Rugby Union, who've gained a very big victory over a gallant Speed on Wheels team. The riders and drivers, well, they lacked height, weight and experience, but nothing in effort, and certainly gave the audience here in Bath something to appreciate. Rugby Union then, into the Super Team final. And the first set of spoils to be presented by Mr. Brian Thompson, Tanzan Torrenson's Director of Marketing and Sales. Steve Smith, with his experience last time as a team member, led the way. And speed on wheels go out, but with a little bit of pride, especially in those gym tests where the performance of Andy Ruffell brought a few red faces from the rugby team. And Sterling Moss, well, he couldn't have been a better manager. In the next semi-final, it's the fighters with a team sprinkled with men who've won world titles up against the strongest sport ever to take part in the championship, the athletes. So rugby will wait, and so will we, to see who they'll meet in the super team final.